Well, typically before we go to Gettysburg, um, we spend uh, three or four days prepping up for the trip. We, we watch uh, clips from the movie Gettysburg because what I've gravitated to is towards this idea of public memory and how we choose to remember things or what things we choose not to remember and why. And so a lot of my own individual reading has been in the area of public memory, Civil War in public memory, Gettysburg in public memory. And I, uh, one of the things that happened is when the movie Gettysburg came out in 1993, there was a tremendous in interest increase. The Ken Burns series came out in 1990, there was an increase in that. And so I began to use those tools from both the film Gettysburg using different clips from the movie to illustrate like, okay, this is what happened here, this is where we're going. They get an overview of the battle. Because they're in, it's an elective class, the assumption is they've got some background, so they come to the class knowing that the Battle of Gettysburg was a pivotal battle in the Civil War, maybe the turning point of the war in and of itself, but then I expand that. And we talk about different characters and individuals who, who are there, like Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, and we play around with the idea of, you know, he's deified, he's made the hero of Gettysburg. Well, you know, there were a lot of people like Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain there over the course of those three days that were doing a lot of things. And he just happened to get a really good press agent in Michael Shara's book, The Killer Angels, and then that turned into a movie. So we look at, I, I show clips, we do that beforehand. We, we look at the, cl uh, the clip from the Ken Burns series, Universe of Battle, on, um, on the Battle of Gettysburg, and then, then we go. And <clears throat> I give handouts so that students can understand things about the different monuments that are on the battlefield that we can talk about and trying to weave in vignettes and then make their stories that they're going to tell part of the, of the broader picture. You stand there in the angle where, the, where Pickett's charged apexed and you can see it. You can see the field in front of you. You can see the vista. You can put yourself in your mind's imagination and look across that line as a Union soldier, or if we're on the Confederate side of the battlefield, look at that from the Confederate perspective. What uh, that allows to happen is that allows synthesis to build in the part of students and to see that, wow, this really, really did take place. Being at a place gives the event a sense of immediacy. Uh, but I think you have to be careful because I think you have to make sure that you don't, don't romanticize these things. And I think, you know, you go to Gettysburg today, you go to Antietam today, any of the Civil War battlefields, any battlefield, and it's not the same, okay? You're not looking at heaps of dead men and dead horses. You don't have the smell. You don't have the smoke. Um, so there is a risk that when you go there that you might romanticize it or you might come away thinking, well, this is a great experience. And in truth, it's awful carnage. Um, <clears throat> but I think that's us imposing on history what we want it to be. But a site, a, a historic house museum, uh, a historic site, a cemetery, they are tangible, real places from the past that you can, you can touch, you can tap into, and you can use to both teach as well as, as to learn. And uh, I think they're, they're valuable because they take your, your teaching as well as the student learning to the next level. But I think, as I said, you've got to be cognizant of the potential risks that you can have um, when you try to do something like, like Gettysburg Third Day Pickett's Charge because you're not going to see the reality. What you're going to see and what's going to be in your head is your memory. And you, as I said earlier, that you impose that on the place as you visit it.